3, 2, 1. Well, boys, it isn't always pretty, but she gets the job done. That's a two wheel drive back home. Some people say, well, can a two wheel drive get anything done? Here you go. wife is playing with her new robot vacuum because my robot vacuum is too manly for her. <laughs> she doesn't argue. And we're gonna go meet the entire crew today and we're gonna get tips and advice from every single one of my operators that have been snow plowing with me that have been with me from 20 years to two months. We're gonna introduce you to Thomas. He's ran loader for me for years. Jordan is new. All right, Jordan, I got a question for ya. We're gonna go meet Tim. All right, Jake, I'm shooting the video. No way. <laughs> really? Ah. <laughs> now this guy's playing. He's plotting with me for Let's talk to Johnny. The sledge. Let's see if Sam's got any words of wisdom for him. Sam. And so, so today you're gonna get a whole different, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different advice from a lot of different people and it's a big show. Lots of information, let's get going. All right you guys, and before we get too far into today's video, please comment down below with your advice to the noobs coming into the industry. A lot of these guys have no clue what they're getting into and so they're gonna be looking to you and your comments down below, so please share your words of wisdom there. When you say I'll dig much deeper, I will shout. All right, you guys. We're going to go meet Tim. Tim's been plowing with me for, I don't know, 20 some years. Tim, how long have you been plowing with me? 20 some years? Has it been 20 some years? Yeah. I, know. I think we've been plowing for. 20 some years together. I don't know man it's been too long all right so we're talking about top tips to give guys that are just getting into the business do you got any top tips for them um okay situations like today it's morning time traffic's coming into these um, places of business keep your head on a swivel yeah because uh Ooh, they're not looking out for you <laughs> no. trust me no, they actually, some of them want to get hit by you, and that's going to sound counterintuitive, but man, false, false insurance claims, we've had, we've been on, uh, like, uh, remember a job site where a guy said you hit his car, and you went out, and you looked at the car, and it was rusted? Oh, yeah. Right where yeah. it was, right where you supposedly had right. yeah. hit it? Crazy how rust can form and just... 20 minutes or so, right? Oh, it's, oh, it's it gets nuts. better than that. So some of these fall, these guys, they'll, like we've been at places where like gas stations is perfect. Like gas stations in Minneapolis, you really had to be careful because people would, you know they were parking behind you. You go forward, backward, forward, backward, and they park right behind you. We were on a job site where we were demolishing a concrete swimming pool 
and one of my guys backed just backed up into the uh, next door neighbor's driveway. Big no-no, you never go on another neighbor's property or driveway, but supposedly he cracked the driveway when the skid loader backed into it. And when we went and looked at it, what did we find? On the driveway? On the driveway. I don't, I don't remember. Weeds growing in the cracks. Oh, okay. Weeds growing in, so as soon as he cracked the driveway, somehow all these weeds popped up in the crack that he just made. Maybe if it had been two weeks earlier, but no, not not the same day. You're not going to get weeds growing in the crack. So, head on a snow. Head on a snow for sure. Head on a snow. Right up behind you while you're trying to push piles up, and you'll have nowhere to go, but you'll just have to sit there and look uh, at them like, ah, I need to back up, so you have to move. All right, that's, that's a great they one. Don't, they don't know what you're doing. They, right, don't, they have a, no clue. That's a great one. All right. Grab him and see if he's got any words of wisdom. One of the things that, uh, as a boss, he is my son-in-law, but as a boss, that I appreciate from guys is guys that continue to work. Just nose to the grindstone. Always going to town. Momentum built up right here. And pile drive through. If you can get Jake to slow down enough to answer a question. Alright, Jake. I'm shooting the video. No way. <laughs> really? Ah, <laughs> no tips. Tips to give new guys coming into the industry. Now you've been following me for four or five years, something like that, yeah, a long time. Around. What kind of advice would you give a new guy coming into it? Uh, be careful, because there's a lot of things you can hit. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure, I'm not good with tips, I just do. So if you were training somebody in right now, and you put them in a loader for the first time, what would be the first thing you'd tell them? Besides, let's assume they know how to operate it, but what would you tell them? Stay in open areas. So when they're first getting into it, yeah. stay in open areas, don't try to sneak between cars, no. don't try to impress people, yeah. because that's when accidents can happen. Yeah. Work within your skill range. Yeah, there you go. There's a great tip right from Jake's mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a work within your skill range is a really good tip, you guys. Um, so, and what we do inside the company is we put our best operators in our best piece of equipment and let them set the bar high so that the other guys can see the potential that they can live up to. So when you come into the company, you pretty much, we always say, whatever piece of equipment you want, but you always got to be in the best. I mean, I'm not saying that to break, but he knows the pattern, he knows the equipment, he gets the job done, so we either put him in the sledge, the ASV, what do you think of this anyway? It's nice, it's slow. It's slower than the... Yeah, but I mean, it's a track machine. It doesn't feel like a track machine. It feels more like a, a skiddy with normal wheels, not like snow wheels. Yes! And you don't hit the rumbling every time you're turning. It's not rumbling and you're shaking. It right! It feels, like, it feels like wheels. Yeah, 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 it's really smooth. Yeah. I noticed it, because I was climbing into some massive piles of snow. I bet. And I was just like, why is this such a nice ride? It is. But this is, you know, it's got a rabbit gear in it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so it goes 9.2. It technically will go as fast as a uh, wheeled skid load. Yeah, I just don't like to use the rabbit gear when I'm pushing snow though. That's another thing, you guys. You don't use rabbit gear when you're snow plowing. Some guys are going to jump up and down and tell you, yes, you got to use rabbit gear. No, you know why you don't use rabbit gear? I don't know exactly why. I know it'll mess something up. Yeah, you're going to have a big knot on your head the first time you hit a curb that you don't oh, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be flying around and you're going to hit one manhole cover or you're going to hit a, 
a curve <laughs> could do forehead meet glass door that's why i wear my helmet yeah your, your dirt monkey helmet all right so work within your skill range you guys don't try to show off that's the worst thing you can do you slowly get into it because I am not dressed appropriately. And this is one of the things, my guys, I always got to remind the guys, dress like you're going to be stuck in a ditch for 12 hours because there's a good chance that you're going to get out onto a job site and your piece of equipment's going to break down. And how many times, Tim, have we, uh, have we not been sitting in a pickup truck but laying underneath the plow or underneath the truck or trying to repair something? So you got to dress for the worst possible scenario. Yep. And later that day, we had one of the lift valves on our snow power pull blade go out. And this is why you gotta dress like you may have to Tim's work outside. Pull is giving them a problem. It won't go all the way down. That's a weird problem. There's always something fun happening. The more moving components you have, the more problems you have. All right, what's going on in here? Well, I'll go up, in and out, but the down is. And then uh, I bet you, I bet you don't have enough uh, pressure. You're gonna have to adjust your pressure up for your down, maybe. I don't know what's going on. Is that, is that leak? Yeah, something's leaking. Huh. Mm. Well, the snow power guys are a call away. Yeah. You can always call them. I don't know, I think, okay, so here's another pro tip now that we're actually experiencing it right now. Look, now you got down pressure. Um, when, you have a, when you have a breakdown, you don't spend a lot of time fixing it right then and there. You try to get through the storm, you try to get your lots cleared, because if you spend a lot of time trying to fix and repair, what'll happen is you'll wear yourself out and then if even if you do get it operational you're already late on your account when if we could get by we uh we actually keep how many we uh we keep three pieces of equipment now as spares we keep two skids and a loader as backups so we have full pieces of equipment that if this whole truck went down he could hop in another piece of equipment and keep going and that's a little excessive but we don't repair out unless it's an easy fix, and um, we'll hop in a different piece just to get through the storm. So those are points. And hopefully this is an easy fix. And what Tim's doing right now is he's filming it. He's gonna send it to Bryson, and then uh, Bryson's with snow power. Bryson will probably walk him through it. Tim is really technical. guys here's a little bit of advice that I can give you <coughs> see these three skid loaders I know what they're doing right now they're getting a game plan put together but I know also what they're not doing and their tires aren't moving so even though I know that they're do they're figuring out what building to go to and how they're gonna work together everybody inside that building there when they look out all they see is three pieces of equipment not moving so if you gotta put a game plan together make it snappy and if you've got a park or if you're tired and you plowed for 20 or 30 hours straight and you just can't move on don't stop where everybody can watch you go stop in the in a, a hidey hole in a corner make your game plan because believe me these guys are all watching got another tip i can think of here okay um stick together if you're on your first big site and and you know everybody gets tired and pretty soon you got a skid steer over here pushing a whole parking lot by himself and a plow truck over here trying to do curbs because he can't find his skid steer and keep them together and keep the equipment on the part of the job that it's intended for okay and so your night teamwork. will go a lot better teamwork and stick with Team, the game teamwork plan. and just like a truck with a skid or whatever piece of equipment you got out there um, seems to work pretty good. You got okay. something that runs curbs and something that does the big lots. And okay, great point. Okay, those are good points. All right. So let's go see, uh, to some of the other guys and see if they've got any pro tips for you guys. And 
I think we got a lot of plowing. We got nine inches of snow coming today. The snow is snowiest. This is the snowiest February in Minnesota history. Yep. We've gotten as much snow in the last two weeks as we've gotten the entire season. Yeah, I was getting worried like we weren't gonna get any snow this year and then boom, boom. We got all of it. All of it at once. All right, let's go to some of the other operators and see what they got to say. Oh, you guys, here comes Jordan. Jordan is new. Jordan is new. All right, Jordan, I got a question for you. Yeah. I'm shooting a video on tips for new operators or new guys coming into the industry. And you're one of the newer guys, yep. but you have learned a ton. Yeah. I know you have because I've watched you kind of transform right before my eyes. Yeah. Yep. If you were going to give these guys some advice, what would you tell them? Um, no matter what piece of uh, you know attachment you're using, whether it's a bucket or a, um, a Raptor Plus like this, I'd say keep the blade moving or just keep the, the attachment always on the ground because um, you'll get the most done. So tell, define that a little bit more for me. What do you mean by that? Um, to be the most productive and efficient, yep. keep the attachment on the ground. Okay, so keep, it, so keep, don't travel with it up in the Yeah, air. correct. Yep. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. That actually makes a lot of sense. I would have never even thought of giving guys that advice. And one of the things I stopped you early on, do you remember when I said? I just saw the video, uh, carrying the snow. Don't the carry the snow. Yep, yep, yep. Don't carry the snow. So what you see with, when he had a bucket, because we have used buckets, yep. even with a bucket, you put it on the ground, and then you push a mass quantity of snow. And with the Raptor Plus, or a pusher, or a plow, you always keep it on the ground and you try to keep pushing from yeah. one side to the next. Yeah, and it's good to have two designated spots because you just push to one side and then push to the other. So and that, that helps with just efficiency. And another thing is be aware of what's underneath the curb. So we're not allowed to put snow over the curbs. We have designated push piles, but some people can pile snow up on along any one of these curbs and islands like that's a curb or an island right there. And if you go ahead and put snow up there and you scrape as you're lifting, as you scrape, you're going to destroy all of the vegetation, all of the landscaping, and that has to be repaired in the spring. So be careful when you go to where you stack snow, what you're stacking the snow on. It's really tough sometimes when it's snowing this heavy to, I, I've done it, but just accidentally going over a curb because you don't see it because it's so it's snowing so hard right yep all right i'm gonna let jordan get back in his piece of equipment how's your fuel good good always keep oh, that's another tip yeah, yeah. right yeah. always keep your fuel what is our rule how much what, when do you uh, i fuel? usually don't go below half but that's nope. my, my don't go below half the reason we don't go below half you guys is because condensation inside of the fuel tank that empty space will turn, will condensate because the heat from the engine will heat it up and it'll create water vapor right out of the air and then that will go into your fuel system. So we always keep our tanks plumb full, always full. Yep, great point. Even though you didn't know you are making it. <laughs> Let's go see somebody else and get some more twainers. Twainers? Tips and pointers. Twainters. Let's go get some more twinters. Ugh, the traffic is getting bad, you guys. It's coming in. All right, there's Thomas in the loader. Golly, it's getting tight. All right, let's go get some advice from him. Let's see if he's got any words of wisdom. All right, Thomas. All right, you guys. We're gonna introduce you to Thomas. He's ran loader for me for years. And I'm shooting a video on advice to get new guys coming into the industry or the business. Do you got any words of wisdom to get these guys? Um, be early, be on time, uh, check your equipment. Um, I live like 15 minutes from here and it takes me 45. So most of the time I try to be a little early, leaving early. 
roads are always sucky, so you don't get, you don't get to come in when the plows are out. So <laughs> you, yeah. don't, you don't get to come in when the roads are nice and salted. No, and no, not when everybody like everybody else. So, <laughs> so that's my word of advice. So leave plenty early. Yes, sir. So if it normally takes you 15 minutes to get to work, you leave 45 minutes early. Yeah, yeah, I do. So okay, because it's just sucky. I live up in Woodbury. Yeah. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And hell, I remember one time you left for work because he's got a full-time job, not still plowing for me, right. working at a nursery. Yep. And you went in a ditch. Yeah, that was not too long ago. <laughs> was... Cost me 300 bucks. <laughs> so all the money I made with you paid for my truck to get out of the ditch. We're doing the daytime maintenance. We're doing what's called an open up, where we just run the the the, the drive lanes. And we're not trying to get in and out. We're not trying to make it perfect because we got to come back tonight when the lots are empty and everybody's gone. That's when it's got to be beautiful. So understand the difference between an open up and a full push. An open up is just straight line shots. Make drive lanes accessible so the cars coming in can get in and out. Full push is when the cars are gone and you clean everything out. Yeah, because these guys don't care if you wait 2,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. They're gonna cut you off. They don't care. They're gone. <laughs> so true. All right. All right, let's go to the next guy, see what he's got to say. All right, you guys, let's go in here. What do we got? The noob lot. The noob lot. So we got one veteran working with two noobs. And let's see, we've got one noob in there. And uh, we've got the veteran in the Volvo. Let's say um and we've got a brand new. He's a baby noob. We got Phil in the Bobcat. Alright. Let's see if Sam's got any words of wisdom for him. Sam, shooting a video up, on advice to give a new guy coming into the industry. Now you've been coaching in the Bobcat. I suppose I have. What Send kind of advice you got? Uh, keep your front tires on the ground all the time, plowing snow. You do not need the down pressure. It's harder on the equipment than it needs to be. And don't ram the piles. Ooh. You don't need to ram the piles. These things can push snow pretty well by themselves. And then, again, it's harder on the equipment than it needs to be. Especially on these blades because they have the rubber grommets in them. You don't want to smash them. So. All right, so know your equipment. And a piece of advice that you're actually doing right now is we put one veteran with a new. Right? I don't know about veteran, but. Well, you know the system. True. You're, you know the equipment. And you're taking Phil wing, right? And so you've been coaching him along, getting him to understand the patterns and rhythm. So if you guys are new, don't be afraid to look to somebody with more experience, especially on a site. Well, that was the best, that was the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. Ask questions from people who know what they're doing. Yeah. Ex That's All right, you guys. Let's go see if we can find the sledge. Sledge territory. Careful. All right, sidewalk guys, which are not my crew, come in and they dump all their snow all over our lots, which is, I mean, what they got to do. But what gets to be a real pain in the butt is when we're already done and we're heading home, and then the sidewalk crew shows up, and then they just plow their snow, just higgledy piggledy. There it goes, right into the lot. Skadoosh. Yeah, I mean, they got a tough enough job as it is. Can't complain. I mean, you can complain, but then you're just a jerk. All right, I see the sledge. So you see this visibility? It's crud. That thing moves so much snow. Any given time frame. I don't know, you guys probably have seen the video where we put the sledge up against two loaders and a skid and a truck. That wasn't, that wasn't, 
and ate up. This thing is just insane. All right, let's talk to Johnny. The sledge, freezing. Can I borrow some of your heat? Some heat, I, I, got, I got plenty of it. I'm freezing out here. Look at, I got my nose pickers all exposed. <laughs> all right, I'm shooting a video, Johnny, where we give some words of wisdom. Yeah, you've plowed with me for 10 plus years, right? That's correct. I think more. They're right around 10. Yeah. So any words of wisdom to a new guy coming into it? Drink lots of coffee. And water. All right. And water. All right. Hydrate. Okay, so that's a great point. Coffee and water, because what'll happen is, um, when if you just drink all coffee, you get weirded out. And you get cramps. Yeah. And you get, I've seen a lot of guys get out of a piece of equipment, even young bucks, like Jake, yep. my son-in-law, he jumped out and they, he almost fell down on his face after being in a skid loader. You got to bring hours. bananas with you for potassium, because otherwise, after sitting in a skid loader for a while, even if it's a comfy one like he has, you end up getting all cramped up. Okay. So water, coffee. And bananas. And bananas. Yep. Okay. And vitamin E. Vitamin E. Vitamin E, it, it helps with the eyes because after a while your eyes start getting goofy on you. Oh, they actually do. You, you start seeing flat. So instead of three dimensional, you start everything starts looking the same. All right, that actually is true. I mean, when you start to plow for, tw oh, you're, now you're talking in the 20 to 30 hour range. Yeah, but everything starts flattening out where it's like when you're playing a video game for too long and, and the screen loses its dimensions, it's just flat. I would have never thought of that one on my own. That's actually, that's actually a really good point. Yep, so the vitamin E is good for your eyes. Yep, so like this morning when I packed, I packed all my tools, I grabbed three cups of coffee and two bottles of, actually two, yeah, two bottles of water. I grabbed my, my Kool-Aid and uh, Gatorade mix and uh, uh, some NOS and I already took my vitamin E and ate my banana this morning. All right, let's actually, let's go in my truck. I think I, that was great advice. Cause you, you know, you gotta fuel up your equipment. We talked about that. You gotta fuel up your body, man. That, that was, I'll show you guys what's in my truck right now. Coffee cup and water. Actually, I'm out of water. Side by each. Great advice, actually. You guys see what, what Blaine is doing? He's plowing the drive through a caribou coffee because that's where you get free coffee. Have they ever given you free coffee? I've never tried. Never no? stopped. I always I've, try. I've, I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm just plowing your drive through in case you want to give me a free cup of coffee. Yeah. All right, so I'm filming a video on advice to a noob, a new guy coming into the industry. Now, this guy, this is Blaine. He's plowed with me for how long? Five years, six years? Uh, five, four years long. Four five. years? Something like that. Anyway, if you got any words of wisdom you would give a new guy coming in? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Because a lot of guys, they'll go out be, the night before and, you know, they know snow's coming, but instead of sleeping, right. and then they think they, they're going to be okay, but what happens is when you get like all a... All day snow. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. We've got an all day snow. So we started at 3 a.m. Yeah. and we'll go all day and then we're going to go right. all night again. And if you try to do that because that's what jake did my son-in-law you guys may have seen him he's running the asv he went out and played boot hockey last night is that why he's limping and i'm just is that why is he limping <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just i was at his house because it was birthday party my grandson's fifth birthday party last night and i'm like i gotta go home by 8 30. oh don't block traffic okay uh -uh. that's another good lesson <laughs> I'm like, I got to go home at 8.30 because I got to get at least three or four hours of sleep. So sleep when you can. Good point. And don't block traffic. I'm a bad, I'm a bad man. Bad, bad man. All right. 
All right, you guys, we're changing shifts right now. And uh, this loader will not be ran uh, for a few hours till the next shift comes in, um, but he's parked wrong. So this loader is parked bass backwards right now. He's got to spin that around. And the reason I say he's parked wrong, if something happens to this loader, we can't jump it. So we got to crawl into the snowbank. We got to crawl back here into a snowbank to jump it. You always park your piece of equipment so that you can get at it if you got to jump it or you got to maintain it. So we'll show you what we actually have done with our other loaders. Everything is always parked in a way that lets you actually. We'll see if he remembers how. So the problem with parking it like that is if this loader doesn't start, my other loader is trapped. Okay? So, hey Phil. Yeah. This is a great example. Um, so if you leave right now, this skid loader here like this, if this loader doesn't start, can we get that other loader out? No sir. That's right. So, when you park, we always leave it so that we can get at the back of the equipment and we always have an exit strategy. We never box another piece of equipment in. So hey, Phil, before you jump in, we're gonna put it right here. This is where you found it, remember? Uh, no, sir. Okay, no worries. You can just call me Stan, by the way. All right, so we'll, we're gonna nose this in right here so the back end is sticking out here, yep. okay? And tight enough in that we can still get the black skid loader out if this one won't start. So we always got an exit strategy and, and a jumping strategy. Jumping means wherever the battery is, we always leave enough opening that we can get at that battery to jump start it if it's cold and doesn't want to fire. Yes, sir. Learn that one the hard way. All right, you guys, here's another mistake. The truck is parked. It's not running. I'm gonna go grab a quick sandwich. And there's the plow, right up in the air, front plow, and in my case, back plow too. That means this truck is now supporting all of the weight of those plows, that's about 3,000 pounds. That's roughly maximum payload on that truck, and it's up in the air, and there's no reason for it. As soon as I get in that truck, I should put those plows down on the ground, and what happens is it relieves all of the pressure and it's no different than not having plows on at all. When the plows are on the ground, they're supporting their own weight. A little bit of the weight's left. The weight of the frame is still on the truck, but let's, let's not make mountains out of molehills, you guys. So anytime you park, you put your plows down, you relieve the weight off the truck, and then you can go, and I, I go and even when I'm just gonna go pay for fuel, plows down on the ground, take the weight off the truck as soon as possible. Here you guys. Hopefully this is my last rookie mistake for you guys. Plug your machines in before you leave. That's all well said, but make sure they're actually on. So, the best thing you can do to make sure your plug is actually working is to use a lighted cord right there. So you can see this lighted cord. That's not lit. So he plugged his machine in, but there's no power to it. These, these, each one of these pieces of equipment pulls 1,500 watts. That's what a block heater pulls, is 1,500 watts. So it's pretty easy to overpower a circuit, especially when you got snow that's like this, wet snow. You get a little water in one of them cords and poof, out they all go. Or you get water in the plug-ins themselves and they'll all go. So just because you plug a machine in, doesn't mean it's actually plugged in. Make sure you guys have power before you leave. Okay, and we cannot forget Frankie. Frankie, you have no clue what we're doing, do you? Nope. Just like everything else, I, I always have a camera. All right, I'm making a video, and I've interviewed everybody in the company on advice they would give to a guy going out snow plowing. You, you actually do the snow blowing and shoveling, 
Yep. You actually head up and manage 67 different properties, taking care of all of that. What kind of advice would you give a guy? And I can't see it because my camera. Um, I don't know. Learn to love a shovel. Learn to love a shovel. Gra oh, so when you say that, I'm saying you probably want to pick your shovel pretty carefully. I pick the light, lightest one I can, the plastic ones, um, and not with the metal uh, edge. Okay. Because the metal edge just gets caught on everything and whatever, and you just you wear it down the, pla the other ones down faster. But they're only eight bucks. Right. Okay. And you also so you bring a whole bunch of different shovels when you go. You yeah. don't just rely on one. I get a scoop shovel, uh, a scraping shovel, and then that big push one. And you also bring spares because yep. you've broken them while you're out, and <laughs> yeah. instead of trying to go get a new shovel, right. it's, and a, it's that one. And then you also bring the lightest snow blower we have which is in the back of my truck right now. Because it never stops snowing here. <laughs> Lately, <laughs> so no. There's no reason to take it out. So good good advice. All right, and you're off today to go? Uh, blow snow. Blow snow. <laughs> Every single day. I'm gonna, switch, so I'm gonna put the big one in the back. Cause he's got like a two car thing he wants to Oh, you got a big one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and heavy snow, cause it hasn't been done. Yeah, it hasn't been cleaned out for a while. Got it. All right, you guys. Well, that is our words of wisdom from operators, from uh, different levels of experience. I hope this video has helped you guys out. Let me know in the comments down below. God bless you guys. And if you stuck with it to this point, that's awesome. Go get them, you guys. And check out these videos right here. And if you're still here, my wife wants to know what to name the Roomba. I put it up on Instagram. Somebody commented that we should name that one Dirt Nap. I kind of like that name, but what should the Roomba be named? Huh? Rue. Rue? I'm calling it Rue. You're ca oh, you've named it Rue? Well, for now, I get it. Yeah, that's all I can think of. It's easy. Cool, okay. Okay. Yeah. Too late. The camera's on you. It's our anniversary today. Mm -hmm. Do you know how long we've been married? 110 years. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. okay, that's so. <laughs> You notice she didn't answer that the right way. Years. 18, yep. God bless, go get him, you guys.